Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to provide you a 10,000 feet view of Azure services. Basically, I'm going to provide you a snapshot of all key Azure services. In order to go through Azure services, I'm going to take architectural approach. Any kind of IT architecture generally starts with storage. On top of storage, you will have network. And on top of network, you will have databases and compute. And on top of compute, you will have app services. And also on top of databases and app services, you can have analytics. And in order to integrate these applications, you can have enterprise application integration. And then these days, IoT is very popular. So I included the Internet of Things also. And then security, when it comes to the cloud, security is very important. And on top of everything, you have tools to manage the services and also tools to develop the services. Okay, so let me take you through Azure services in these categories one by one. First of all, in storage, you have blob, which you can use in order to store unstructured data in the cloud, such as documents, pictures, etc. And you have table in order to store table data. You can store no schema data within Azure tables. And you have queues in order to store messages. And you have file in order to create a file share between virtual machines within Azure. And also you have disks in order to create a disk and attach it to your virtual machine and data lake storage, which is a bit costly compared to blob storage. But if you want high performance computing, go for data lake storage and you have data box, which is used if you want to transfer large amounts of data, i.e. in terabytes into Azure as a one off. In that case, you can put all the data into a data box, send the data box to Microsoft and Microsoft will load the data into Azure for you. And the next thing is Store Simple. Store Simple is an integrated storage management solution that will manage the storage tasks between on premise and cloud. Basically, it's a company that is acquired by Microsoft and Microsoft is offering that service as part of Azure. And the next thing is Storage Explorer. It's basically a desktop tool in order to manage your storage within Azure. And finally, Archive. In case if you know AWS, it is equivalent of Glacier basically where you can store the data and um, it's basically very cheap to store the data within archive. However, if you want to access the data, it might take some time. Basically, it might take up to four hours. And the next category of services are network related within which you have virtual network using which you can create your own private network in cloud and you have load balancer. Load balancer provides layer four load balancing. Application gateway provides layer seven load balancing and Traffic Manager provides a regional level load balancing and rerouting. So if you want to route the traffic between the regions, then go for Traffic Manager and Express Route and VPN. These two are used in order to connect your on-premises data center to the Azure. You can use Express Route if you want to have a private connection. And if you want a connection over internet, you can use VPN. And in general, you have DNS, Firewall, Virtual WAN and DDoS. Okay. And in compute, you have virtual machine. Basically, you can deploy virtual machines in Azure and you have cloud service, service fabric. Both are past services and you have virtual machine scale sets. Virtual machine scale sets are basically used if you want to deploy thousands of identical machines. So if you want to deploy hundreds of machines which are identical to each other, then you can use virtual machine scale sets and you can use batch if you want to schedule a batch in the cloud and you can use functions. Functions are based on serverless architecture. Thereby, you will not purchase any underlying compute power. Basically, you will deploy your function on the cloud and call it. And based on the number of instances and the duration of the instance, you will pay. OK, and you can deploy SAP HANA workloads on Azure and you can create and manage high performance computing workloads or big compute workloads using Cycle Cloud. Again, Cycle Cloud is an offering from a company which is purchased by Microsoft and they are offering Cycle Cloud as part of Azure Compute. And when it comes to databases, as usual, you have SQL Database, SQL Data Warehouse on Azure, and you have SQL Stretch Database, which I'm going to explain about it in database section, and Cosmos DB, which is mainly a no schema database, using which you can able to access MangoDB, Cassandra, Azure tables. Basically, Cosmos DB comes with set of APIs using which you can access different databases. Okay. 
and Azure database for. The reason I left like that is there are offerings from Microsoft where you can deploy MySQL on the cloud using Azure database for MySQL. And similarly, you can use Azure database for Postgres SQL in order to deploy Postgres SQL. Similarly, I'm pretty sure Microsoft will keep on adding this. So that's the reason I left Azure database for. And in databases, you have Redis cache and data factory. If you want to perform ETL kind of a processing, then you can use data factory and you have data migration service, which you can take the advantage of it in order to carry out the data migration from on-premises data center to Azure. And finally, you have SQL Server on VM. So these are all the offerings in database area. And in app services, you have web apps using which you can deploy web applications, mobile apps using which you can deploy mobile backend services, logic apps. If you want to have workflow on the cloud, then you can define the workflow using logic apps, API apps using which you can deploy web APIs on the cloud and you have Azure search, Azure notifications. If you want to send push notifications to the cloud, sorry, to the mobile devices, then you can use notifications, API management in case if you have a large number of APIs and you want to manage them in a right way and also you want to commercialize them, then API management might be the right choice for you. And in case if you want to develop YouTube like application, then media services is the right choice for you. And if you have a media content and you want to reduce the latency of delivery of that media content to the users that are spread across the globe, then you can take the advantage of content distribution network service from Azure. Okay. So these are all the services from app services and in analytics, you have HD insight, machine learning using which you can do predictive analytics on the cloud. You have cognitive services. Basically there are set of APIs which you can consume. For example, voice recognition, facial recognition API and so on. And you can have data explorer using which you can run ad hoc queries on terabytes of data with high performance and Power BI embedded. Basically, you can embed the Power BI within your application and pay per load. So all the time, Microsoft is changing the licensing model for this Power BI embedded and Power BI also. So just keep a close watch on it in case if you want to use Power BI embedded and you have data lake analytics in case if you want to do high performance analytics, particularly on the data that is at rest, then you go for data lake analytics. But if you want to carry out analytics on the data that is in transit, then use stream analytics. Okay. So these are all the offerings in analytics area. And in enterprise application integration, you have service bus, which is used for message based integration. And you have BizTalk services, logic apps, which is workflow based integration and event grid, which is basically an event routing service where you can define what should happen in a near real time when some event occurs. Okay. So these are all the services that you can use in enterprise application integration area. There are other services also. I'm not touching it and we can't fit into a single slide. So I'm touching only the key services. And in terms of Internet of Things, you have IoT Central, IoT Hub, Event Hubs. When it comes to Events Hubs, it is specifically for events. So if you have millions of events that are coming, you can use Event Hubs to stream them and analyze them also. But Service Bus is more focused on messages, whereas Event Hubs is more focused on events. And you can have Notification Hubs in case if you want to send push notifications and all those stuff, then you can use Notification Hub. And you can use IoT Edge if you want to do Edge analytics before the data even come to the cloud, then you can use IoT Edge. And security, which is very important when it comes to cloud. In security, you have Azure AD, which is the equivalent of Windows AD on cloud. And Key Vault, basically using Key Vault, you can store cryptographic keys and secrets in the cloud that can be accessed by cloud applications. Instead of storing the secrets and keys in different places like application configuration files and all those stuff, store them in Key Vault and applications can access the secrets at runtime. And the third thing is Security Center, which is the most important offering in security area in Azure. This Security Center will monitor your resources, provide recommendations and also send emails in case a critical security event occurred. 
So for example, if somebody hacked into your computer, then the security center will send an emails to you about that incident. So security center offers a lot of functionality with it using which you can monitor the security posture of your Azure. And role-based access control using Azure AD, you can implement role-based access control. And the next thing is Azure B2C. In case if you want to have a cloud-based identity management solution for your consumer oriented applications, then you can go for Azure B2C. Using Azure B2C, you can actually manage millions of identities. And the next thing is Azure multi-factor authentication. And finally, web application firewall. Mainly this web application firewall is part of application gateway. It's more like an add-on, but you can use this to front end your web application. So the web application firewall will protect from common web-based attacks like XSS attack or SQL injection attack, etc. Okay. And the next thing is developer tools. We are nearly there. So please bear with me. In developer tools, we have Visual Studio using which you can develop applications. You can write code in order to manage some of Azure services also. So you can use Visual Studio from development point of view. From administration point of view, you can use Azure PowerShell, CLI and ARM templates. And most of the services also provide REST APS, which you can call in order to manage the service or in order to do some operational activities. So for example, posting an event into Event Hub, you can use REST API in order to post an event into Event Hub. And you have Storage Explorer and Emulator in order to develop storage solutions in Azure and also manage storage services in Azure. And finally, management tools. Within management tool, you have Azure Monitor, which enables you to do basic monitoring. And if you want to do advanced monitoring, go for log analytics and application insights. And in addition to that, you have Advisor, Azure Advisor, Network Watcher, Scheduler, Automation, using which you can automate a lot of tasks. There's something called Runbooks. You can develop Runbooks and schedule them so that you can automate the scaling of virtual machines or start and stop virtual machines at some point of time, etc. And you have billing and cost management. So basically, as part of management tools, you have two types. One is operational management tools, such as Azure Monitor, Application Insights, Log Analytics. And you have cost management tools or financial management tools within Azure. In a way, using them, you can manage the cost associated with your Azure services. Okay, so this is the snapshot of different Azure services available in different categories. However, there are some key Azure services also, such as site recovery, Azure backup, which you can use for DR type design. However, I haven't touched upon them, but I will touch upon them in different sections of the course as and when appropriate. Okay, so that's it for this lecture. In this lecture, I have provided you a glimpse of different Azure services that are available in different categories at a very, very high level. I know you are getting bored with these theory lectures. So in the next lecture, I'm going to provide a demonstration of Azure portal. Basically, I'm going to log in into Azure portal and show you different things just to familiarize you with Azure portal. So if you have some time, join me in the next lecture.